to grab the cup of tea, have an ice vovo, wherever you are, and have a listen to Behind Blue Eyes, Stephen Roach, my friend. Hello. Timmy, good morning to you. What about a Scotch finger biscuit? I love them. Oh, I know. The biggest problem with me, I don't know whether you're like this block, but as soon as I start carving into one, the whole packet's in danger. <laughs> <That's> it, mate. <laughs> oh, I know the curling. Can't, I can't I know stop. All right, we digress. Let's talk football because there's plenty of it. Uh, New South Wales, number six jersey, Jack Whiten, Luke Keary, Cody Walker. <coughs> Who does Stephen Roach uh, in the Behind Blue Eyes selection panel choose for Origin if you had to do it today? Oh, mate, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Jack Whiten, but I, I think that I think they'll go with uh, Kiri. Because, only because you can probably fit Jack Whiten in the centres as they did last year. So um, I'll, I'll probably go Kiri, but I love big 5.8s. I've said it before. I, I look back at Wally Lewis and, and Brad Fittler and Laurie Daly and all those sort of guys. Um, but um, I think he deserves his chance. He's won the last couple of premierships, Kiri, and... Um, We've been waiting for him to debut for New South Wales. It's funny that he's won all those premierships and never debuted yet. So um, I, I think he might win the spot if he's fitting well. It's interesting. You mention our coach, Brad Fittler, and the coach before him, Laurie Daly. Quite often people don't understand, particularly of this generation, how good those two were because obviously Andrew Johns was made an immortal. And these guys were not too far behind whether they were phenomenal those blokes. No, mate, you're hundred percent right, mate. You know, when when something needed to be done in an origin in that arena, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to play with Laurie um and Brad, uh, as a real young fella. Um they were they were they were sensational players, you know. Um they they could turn a game on a tier. And you know, they you know, when you look at X Factor players and you look at over the last well it's forty years of origin. You know, those guys would be right up there with, with all the names. Uh, the, the Luke Keary option does play into that whole idea of playing in a successful team, playing with combinations, Cordner and others that will be there. Yeah, 100%. That, that left-hand side that the Roosters have got is so potent. Um, yeah, mate, combinations are always pretty big in origin. And, you know... It seems an age since we've been waiting for Kiri to make his debut. You know, I, mean, I know I mentioned it just a, a few minutes ago, but, you know, a bloke who's won that many premierships <laughs> and hasn't played Origin yet, you, you wonder why. And it's, it's because of injury. And, mate, I really hope, fingers crossed, that, um, that he, at the end of the year, and, and, you know, all eyes will be on the Roosters. They'll be there when the whips are cracking at the end of the year. Um, hopefully he can come through fit and well. Look, uh, venues have been confirmed. We knew one was going to be in Sydney, one was going to be in Brisbane, but we now know that we are powering ahead with Adelaide. And mm. I, I, look, I think this will be phenomenal, having covered so much sport in that city over the course of time and mm. the way that people get behind it and their beautiful, beautiful ground. How important is it just to hit the ground, Runny, that mentality around getting off to a good start? Oh, mate. I, I think uh, I don't really know what the percentage are, but the the biggest win is the first one. You've got to win the first one, then you give yourself um, a couple of bites of the cherry, don't you? Uh, in, especially in state of origin. So I reckon it'll be a high percentage of the team that hits the ground running and wins the first game uh, would win the bulk of the origin series. So um, yeah, very important. I'm, I'm glad it's. I'm, I'm glad we take one-off games. Uh, in the Origin Series, so other, you know, states and countries or whatever, wherever we're going to take it to can get to see how big Origin is and, and what a contest it is. So uh, Adelaide probably pay big money to get people to their, to their city. I don't know whether we're going to have uh, that many people that are going to be able to go and watch it, but, um, you know, they, they, put, they would have paid a lot of money for it. And, um, you know, it's, it's good that they're going to keep to their word and go there. Yeah, fingers crossed we, we might be able to get a... Uh... Uh, a nice uh, chunky crowd on board for that one. Now, what about um, selection process block? It is at the back end of the year. We've we mentioned that nearly every week we've been here. Do you stick loyal uh, with guys from the past? Or do you have to go on form? Is it a combination of both? What do you think? Oh, I think it's a combination of both. And I, look, I think I think the teams that finish at the back end of the comp, you know, if you if you're in the last you know, top four sides and, you know, you happen to play in the grand final, we're always going to, we're always maybe going to see a boulder because, you know, form's, you know, it's all about form, but Tommy's coming back this week and we'll get a couple of games under his belt. Um, I, I can't, 
I don't, I don't really understand all the all the talk about you know Tommy coming back to play Origin, mate. Tommy's coming back to play for Manly. You know that's what he does. He's a footy player. Uh, they wouldn't let him come back and play unless he's a hundred percent fit. So, um, you know, everyone that's saying oh he's coming back to play Origin, yeah, sure, he wants to he wants to be in the Origin side. But you know, I, I also think that he wants to help Manly finish the season um, the way he he thinks they deserve to. Yeah, you'd never get a bloke with a more committed attitude than him. Maybe his brother. They're just absolute gold, those two blokes. But uh, there is a, there is a point too there, Stephen. Like a, a back coming back um, into a, a team from injury, it's quite in contrast to an edge player or a guy in the middle. It's it, they get more time to put air in their lungs in the game, don't they? Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Look, I just think back to uh, a hamstring injury he had like last year or the year before. I can't, I can't really remember. He, he struggled with that sort of um, injury. He came back in a game against St George, uh, St George Illawarra. He ran for 300 metres and scored two tries <laughs> after a yeah. long layoff with injury. So, look, there's no wor- there's no worries about this bloke. He would. Uh, He's a, he's a real professional. He'll be super fit. And I would expect him to come back and do exactly the same thing as he did against uh, Saints uh, those, well, last year or the year before, whenever it was. Stephen, 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 what's the matter, Parramatta? What is the oh, matter, mate. Parramatta? Well, mate, I don't, I don't really know. It, it looks like the cohesion's really gone out of them, doesn't it? It looks like, uh, it looks like they're sort of maybe arguing with each other or I don't know. It doesn't look like they're, they're, a, they're a real happy footy side at the moment. When you watch Penrith play, um, you know, it looks like they challenge each other and their forward pack are all in on, you know, on song. Uh, they just look a bit, bit rusty to me. A few blokes are out of sorts. They're playmakers especially. No Brown. Uh, Moses is sh- shouldering most of, the, uh, most of the workload. The biggest problem for them is that... They, they find it hard to score now, but when you when you have a look at through their lineup, they've got some blokes that are terrific try scorers, and you know they should be getting across the stripe. But mate, something's happened. I mean, you know when you when you look at the start of the season, they went on that run, and everyone was going, "Geez, Parramatta, how much have they improved from last year?" But mate, the the thing is, coming good at the right time of the season. You know, if, if you have a look at South Sydney, they they're exactly you know what we're talking about now. Is you know you don't win the Melbourne Cup in January. You know, so, you know, Parramatta might have, might have peaked too early and they're finding it hard to come back. How much does belief play a part, Block? Because I, I know it's so much about physical, it's so much about talent, but mm. where, where does belief come into it? Where does that, that, that sort of... And the great coaches have been the great man managers. Uh, yeah. Give us your thoughts. Uh, well, mate, I look at a bloke like Wayne Bennett, you know, the, the story is that he doesn't, you know, doesn't flog his players in, in pre-season. Oh, they train hard, of course. But if you have a look, um, you know, a bloke like Wayne Bennett's been around for a long, long time, knows the business backwards, knows what works for footy teams, not only the South Sydney side, but every side that he's coached. You know, you don't, you don't win all those premierships, uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, irrespective of the players you've got, because it's all about timing. This, you know, uh, peaking and all that sort of stuff, it, it, it's all so important that you've got to come good right around the time when you need to. You know, this is this is a marathon, mate. This is 20, 24 rounds. It's only 20 rounds this season, but you still got to play, you know, 20 rounds and then the semi-finals and the grand final. So it's all about getting there in the best possible shape with the best team that you can uh, on grand final day. So, um, you know, it's all about timing. And, you know, we're all talking about being a two or three horse race. I, mate, I, I count South in there now just because of the way that... Um, the way that they've been handled all season and the way they're coming good now. What about Canberra? So the, the teams, a lot of people are saying are Roosters, Panthers, Storm, and some have said, oh, I think they're the only ones that can win. You've thrown Souths into the mix. Uh, Canberra. I like Canberra you know, too, mate. Mm. I like Canberra. I like, uh, you know, I, I like their forward pack. I like, I like, I, I think they've got the strongest forward pack in the competition when you add the bench on. If you have a look at the starting sides, I would say, I would say, you know, Penrith would be right up there and, and the Roosters. But I, I just think with the depth that they've got uh, with the Canberra Raiders, um, I, mate, I think they're just flying under the radar a little bit. They're down there in Canberra just going about their business. Uh, if they, you know, if they can finish in the top four, 
mate, I, I reckon we might I reckon we might see a repeat of last year's grand final. That's 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 the way I'm thinking at the moment. Interesting. We've got an intriguing few weeks ahead. We certainly do. Who has earned themselves a debut New South Wales jersey? Do you think Ryan Pappenhausen uh, has been mentioned a lot? He's a tough guy. He can play in a number of positions. He seems a he seems a perfect fourteen or fifteen off the bench. Yeah, uh, that's going to be you know that's going to be you know for Freddie and and Danny Badiris and Greg Alexander and all that to work out. I don't know. I don't know whether I know you mentioned he can play in a number of different positions, but you know going into going into Origin, you got to you know you got to concentrate on one. You know if you have a look at you have a look at Tedesco, it would definitely be the fullback. So he'll, he's an eighty minute player. I think my own opinion. My, uh, my own opinion is that we, if we're going to play week in and week out for the for three weeks in a row, I reckon we're going to I reckon we're going to have to have the balance of the team. You know, with twenty five, apparently it's going to be twenty five players, so that's room for eight players uh, apart from the seventeen that are starting. I reckon I reckon they'll be you know the bulk of them will be forwards. I reckon because of the way um, you know, the intensity of State of Origin, the way State of Origin's played. So I reckon. I reckon we might see a couple of backs on the bench, but I reckon uh, I reckon we'll see. You know, I reckon we'll see half a dozen forwards that'll come in. Well, James Tamo, um, I'd be surprised if he gets picked this year, but he has played Origin before. The reason I bring up his name is is he's heading to your Tigers. Uh, hmm. What do you, what do you make of all that? Penrith resting him against the Cowboys. Yeah, I, mate. I don't know. You know. It, you know he's been a good player for a long, long time. But you know when I when I had a, had a look at what you know Packer and Madalino brought to the to the Tigers, mate, they were great players. Uh, but you know, you sort of your engine as a front rower runs out pretty quickly. And you know James is James is getting a little bit a little bit long in the tooth now. I, I don't really know whether the recruitment of the Tigers um, felt burnt about. You know Packer and Madalino, but they've they've seemed to me like they've gone and done the same thing. If it was me, uh, and then my team, as you know, Timmy, I, I would have went hard after Heverington, uh, the young front rower from uh, from Penrith that had been playing a little bit with the Warriors. That would have been my number one target. And then if I'd have got him, then I might have went for Tame. But that that's just me, mate. You know, it's uh, you know everyone's got their own opinion. But I just I just think I just think we were burnt a little bit. Uh, the West Tigers by buying front rowers that were at the back end of their uh, their career, and I, I I think we've done the same with Tame, but he, he might prove me wrong. Yeah, well, uh, a guy that's just flying at the moment, and uh, he will be the New South Wales halfback if he stays fit. Is Nathan Cleary? Uh, I would think that anyone that was going to throw him out of that position, the only way they're going to get there is if if this young bloke gets injured. He's he's on yeah. fire. Mate, he's unbelievable. Uh, you know, I, I think I've said it before on the podcast. He's the most improved player in the game, no, no doubt. Although he played Origin last year in the first couple of games, he, mate, he's been unbelievable. He's Arsenal. Uh, the the tricks that he's got in his bag, uh, mate, he is. And you know, you can say it now. He's only a young fellow. I can, well, I'm saying it. He's a complete footy player. Uh, he's got the the understanding of when to run. He's got the right options. Uh, he's got all different types of kicks uh, that, that, that very rarely are the wrong ones at that time. So, mate, he's uh, mate, he's an unbelievable player. And the great thing for New South Wales is he, you know, he could be around for for a long, long time. Yeah, and uh, the the bottom line is with him is that uh, he now just runs that footy team, doesn't he? And it, we mentioned at the start of the year. James hmm. Maloney's not there. He's just grabbing games by the scruff of the neck. And I know that that's what you like to see in football teams. And you haven't yet seen it with a guy like Mitchell Moses at Parramatta and a few other places. Yeah, Tim, you know, there's a lot of pressure on on uh, Cleary this year to, to take over that mantle. You know, he's a dominant player when you had a look at, you know, Maloney when he was there. But, you know, all the pressure's been put on him. But he's, mate, he just chews it up. He's like a Pac-Man. He just, he just eating it up and... Mate, he's, he's going to get better and better. It's hard to see how he's going to be a lot better player than he is now. You know, it's just going to be, you know, he's, he, he's worked out what consistency is. And, mate, he's been consistently their best player week in and week out. I wouldn't even be surprised, although he got stripped of a few points in the Daily M uh, with the TikTok. Mate, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't win the Daily M this year. 
Yeah, he, he's been he's been unbelievable. You you make my mind wander. Imagine you and I if we did a TikTok dance. That would be interesting. A we can we, we can we can do that, mate. I don't know if, I don't know if we'll show it to anyone, but we can you know we can certainly bit of, practice. Bit a bit of a flashback to the eighties. Um, <laughs> uh, what about Boyd Cordner? Um, look, we all love him. Uh, there's a, oh, there's I love a bit the, of I love the bloke. Yeah, I know the, the the concussion stuff. It's it's a real worry, isn't it? Mate, you got you know you got to realise you know you know when you finish your footy career, you got another thirty years or whatever of work, or, or you know uh, you know having a having a good time and that you know and enjoying yourself. Um, for me, for me, you know, Boyd's his own worst enemy. Just the way he plays, mate. You you can't. And I'm a great admirer of his, mate. He's a sensational player, great leader. I just, I just, you know, I, I just wish um, that. that you know, he doesn't keep playing and, and keep getting those sort of knocks, mate, because um, I'm worried about him down the track. Uh, but, you know, uh, he, he's the only one that'll know how he feels and, and whether, he can, can, whether he can keep going, you know. Can he adjust Can he adjust the, the manner in which he plays, Block? I don't think so, Timmy. I think he's one of those guys, bull at the gate. He goes 100 million miles an hour, runs that tough line weekend. He's been doing it, you know, since he was 17, mm. um, you know. There's been a you know a lot of tragedy around his family in that in the last few weeks and you know I just mate, I, I just hope he's well mate I, I I really admire him as not not only as a footy player but mate you know I know him as a bloke he's a he's a real tremendous real tremendous bloke and he's got a good family and you know I you know I hope uh, you know I hope he you know realizes you know when when it, when it's time to give it away but you know he he's the only one that knows that. Yeah, and definitely they've been through a difficult time, him and the family and Gemma and the whole crew in yeah. our in our thoughts and prayers at the moment. Yeah. Um, changing block um, to the other side of the field, the Sharks beat the Warriors. Now, I was at this game down there uh, at Cogra on Sunday night mm. and Toby Rudolph, the way that he just muscled his way over to score that try, he's a big unit who's worked hard a yep. massive amount of ability and a huge tank of uh, inspir- uh, you know, perspiration. He's ready to go. Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it because the game was on the line. You know, you know, you were, I was down there too, Timmy, and mate, it was a, it was two and a throw in all game, wasn't it? You know, it was a mm. it was a good game of footy actually. Uh, tough, tough game too. Um, you know, the Sharks had to fix their defence up a little bit, and they, you know, they were a little bit better in defence. They'll have to they'll have to get a lot better if they're going to go a little bit further in the in the semi-finals and the grand final if they get there. But um, yeah, mate, he uh, the game's on the line, and he he's, he put his hand up and scored that great try. It's a bullocking run, um, and, and scores a try, and um, you know wins the game for uh, wins the game for them. So yeah, mate, he's uh, yeah, he's one to, to look out for. Um, I think he's uh, he's pretty sort of he's got a bit of a strut about him too. I don't mind that. <laughs> got the haircut, no. the strut, and all that sort of stuff. So you know, if you if if you got all that and you can back it up, no one no one really cares. You know, so um, you know he's he's been a fine this year for you know especially you know come from reserve grade in Newtown and mate he's he's made an impact at the Sharks this year. Oh yeah, look if someone's going to be a bolter, if the Sharks do a right over the next few weeks. You know, his name's going to be continued to be mentioned. I know that I know Freddie's a big fan now. Uh, the Broncos seem like a. Um, this sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But having followed and covered football for a long time, the Broncos seem like a danger game for the Eels. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I, I mean, I, I keep thinking that every week that the Broncos are going to come good when I look at their their team and their roster and all that sort of stuff. I, mate, they've lost their way now. I don't. I don't think they can. I don't think they can, you know, do any good in in the last couple of games. You know, um, be a good one for for Parramatta to to get on top of them and win. But um, you know, you only remember back the last year when it all started for the Broncos when they beat them by fifty in the semi final. Um, yeah. There was a little few cracks starting to appear in the building, wasn't there? Um, oh, mate, if you know, if I'm the Broncos, I'm looking forward to the off season and looking forward to the new coach and you know just getting this season out of the way and just forgetting about it, you know, and just yeah. try and start again. But the last thing Parramatta would want to do is just turn up, wouldn't they? Particularly well, in they, the form that they're in. Well, they can't afford to. Parramatta not playing well enough to just turn up and think it's all going to happen for them. So 
you know, they're going to have to be, they're going to have to be switched on. They've got their own problems at the moment, haven't they? Parramatta, mm. and, you know, they've got to, they've got to find a little bit of form and find it pretty quickly. Mate, the Knights were blown off the park um, last round. They've got the Dragons this time. Mm. Yeah, and, and look, they've, they've got a lot of origin players in the middle, haven't they, uh, Newcastle? Yeah. They've mixed their form. They've been up and down all year. Yeah, they've got to get rid of this, you know, win two, win, win two, lose one, win one, lose one. They've got to, you know, you can't, you can't afford to do that now. We, we talk about consistency a lot on this podcast and, you know, that's, that's what they need, you know. You know, obviously, you know, what, what happened with them last week, if that didn't rattle their cage and, you know, thinking, you know, we'd just turn up and go through the numbers. But, mate, you could see the distance between both the teams last week where the Roosters just, mate, they just peppered their, their right-hand defence. They went up that blind side. They scored three tries down there and they just, they just couldn't fix it mid-game. And... Um, Mate, there was some highlights in that game that that highlighted how how ordinary that they are going. Newcastle, the coach, has tried every which way but loose. Um, you know, he's blown up. He's tried the soft approach. He's tried the cuddle. Um, but mate, they're, they're just not playing well at the moment. Every which way but loose. Not a bad name for a movie, Stephen. Yeah. Um, the, um, but the, the the thing also there in regards to the Knights is Mitchell Pearce, he, he struggled to form a steady halves combo because there's been a lot of injuries. Yeah, and they swap and change and that all the time. And, you know, that's that's been the biggest problem. And they brought young Lino in there and, you know, he played against the Warriors and went ordinary. They gave him another chance the next week and he played pretty well and they won that game. But, you know, as I said, mate, they win one, lose one, lose two, win one. You know, you can't, you can't do that. Um, you know the pressure's on. I mean, that's that's why the number sevens get paid all the big bucks, mate. You know, that you know they're running the side, and they, you know, they're at the end of the day, you know, they're held accountable for you know for how they play, how the team plays. So, you know, when you know when they win and you get all the accolades and all that sort of stuff, and everyone enjoys, you know, uh, the spoils of winning. You, you've also, you know, got to understand that you know when you get beaten, you get flogged. Uh, you've got to take a, a little bit of the blame too. Uh, the Dragons, well, I mean, there's a few Origin boys in there. Tyson Frizzell probably at the, the top of the top of the queue. Um, who else do you think may be uh, in line for Origin for them? They 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 want to finish well. They really dropped the ball last week against Canberra. Mm, yeah, they've been ordinary, mate. You know, when when I have a look at their roster, um, you know, obviously, obviously McGuinness, you know, could be a candidate for for Origin because he can play mm -hmm. he can play hooker and he can play lock and he can play you know off the bench and all that sort of stuff. He could play in the back row. Uh, he's a wholehearted player. He's easily been, you know, probably along with Lomax, uh, St George Illawarra's best player. Um, so yeah, mate, he could come in the contention. I'm sure that they'll, mate, they'll they'll pick Frizzell in the squad for sure. He's only got a couple of games left with the Dragons and then moves on to Newcastle. So uh, yeah, I don't. You know, I, I, I've been disappointed to tell you the honest truth about St George Illawarra this season, and you know, I haven't, I haven't seen anything that will convince me, or you know, having a look at their roster now, um, you know, they're going to do much better next year. Yeah, oh, look, I've got a bit of confidence in Anthony Griffin. I think that he'll straighten things out. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I like the what he's done at other clubs. So I'll be interesting to see what happens with the mighty Red V going forward. But Stephen, we've we've gone to Clint Eastwood in every which way, but loose. We've we've covered some territory, all bar our TikTok dance. That is behind well, blue eyes. All about it. Yes, good man. Thank you, Timmy. Tedesco for the corner, Tedesco's over!